Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. Today is Halloween. Welcome and buckle up. We've got a show lined up for you guys. Let's start with Synoptic. Petro China hit hard by China's slow growing oil demand. Next, coming around the corner, we have oil steady after EIA confirms drawdown in crude and gasoline inventories. So seasonal or just good economy? I don't know. What are Russia and Iran cooking up in their recent flurry of high-level meetings? Buckle up. You can't beat a good EV story. Ford lost another 58,000 additional for every EV sold in Q and third quarter or $1.2 billion. Man, let's keep going on the lawfare here. Let's take a look at California Target's ExxonMobil's plastic recycling claims and its latest lawfare against big oil. Woo! Do not do business in California. Leave the state now. Let's go to Synoptic, our first story here. Synoptic PetroChina hit hard by China's oil demand. China's two largest refiners, Synoptic and PetroChina, have reported steep declines in refining outputs as domestic oil demand weakened further in the third quarter. This goes along with the EIA story as well. Lower refining and chemicals demand contributed to sharp drop in the third quarter profit, $1.3 billion from a year ago, year on year. That's a lot of yawn. PetroChina, whose parent company, China National Petroleum, is the country's largest upstream producer. China's oil demand fell 264,000 barrels per day to 15.52 million barrels per day during the quarter versus the previous three months and was 362,000 barrels per day lower on year on year. That's pretty wild. Diesel is also cut. Diesel cut production by 14.2% from a year ago. Now, I see that as, as a very big deal, but I also see that as they're still buying all the oil they can and packing it wherever they can. So oil is steady, though, after EIA confirms a draw in crude gasoline inventories. At the time of the writing, Brent was at 68, with WTI at 68.29, and Brent was trading at 72.25. The change in oil stocks compared with a build of 5.5 million barrels for the previous week, which pressured oil prices at additional. The American Petroleum Institute, meanwhile, on Tuesday, reported estimated inventory draws across crude and fuels, helping prices move higher for a time. Gasoline stocks shed 27 million barrels on the week of October 25th with production at 9.7 million barrels per day. Uh, this is from Irina Slav over at uh, Oil Price. Fantastic uh, publication as well as Irina. Love Irina. I talked to her on Monday. Let's go to the next story. What are Russia and Iran cooking up with the recent flurry of high-level meeting? This one, I really like Simon Watkins. He is also a writing for oilprice.com. When you take a look at the three big bullet points of this article, Russia and Iran recently held high-level meetings to strengthen their 20-year cooperation treaty. Both countries aim to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar in international trade, especially with uh, key partners like China, and a proposed land bridge through the Middle East would enable Russia and Iran to expand their influence in transport routes. This is critical. I've been talking to George McMillan and others around the world about the geopolitical structure going on around the world and pipelines and oil, and Simon really hit it out of the park in this article. Uh, the unbelievable Iran and Russia are working together. Now, Israel did take out much of their air defenses in this past week. So they're, I'm sure, going to be getting some more of that equipment in from uh, Russia as well. 
But as I said, bookmark this podcast because we will see an end to the Ukraine war. We will see the EU buying Russian gas in 2025. So, but we're going to see an end of the war before that so that they can get it done. Let's keep rolling on here. Ford lost another 58K for every EV sold in in the third quarter or $1.2 billion. You can't buy this kind of entertainment. The, the $1.2 billion Q3 loss brings its 2024 hit to $3.7 billion loss. Holy smokes, demand struggles, high cost, and charging issues still dodging the EV push. I think that Tesla and Elon are going to be the last man standing in the EV market in the U.S. We need to go to, I'll tell you what, we have got to go, instead of like Thelma and Louise off a cliff, we need to go to... The first one that comes out with a good truck a hybrid model will be the winner in the EV market. I guarantee it because I consider hybrids pretty close to EVs. And I think that that's going to be a big difference. The $3.7 billion loss is equal to the gross profit. Ford calls it EBIT, short for earnings before interest and taxes. It made on Ford Blue, the division that makes internal combustion cars. So internal but combustion cars, everything was wiped out by the EV side. Holy smokes, Batman. I do want a Cybertruck. I just want to go on record because uh, I think we everybody needs a bulletproof car. So we'll take a Ford three, uh, 350 internal combustion and make it bulletproof or buy a Cybertruck. I don't know. I think I'm going to buy a Ford 250 and then buy a Cybertruck and be at the same price point. That way I got two vehicles. Got, I feel good for helping the environment. Let's go to California's Target's ExxonMobil's plastic recycling claims and its lawfare against big oil. You can't buy this kind of stuff. Exxon knew the battle cry was inflamed and inspired climate activists for decades since the 1970s, they, they alleged. Exxon knew that humans caused climate change was real, but lied about it. And, and there was a wasn't a crisis and kept marking this planet killing fuels and petrochemicals feedstocks. What a bunch of malarkey. And, and this is nothing more than placating their uh, uh, voter base in California. My advice to Exxon, leave the state. Let them suffer. They're going to end up buying all their petroleum products and their oil and their gas from China. Mark my words. So uh, with that, like, subscribe, share, read this to your pets, hug your kids. But more importantly, also, if you are coming up into the tax season and you're afraid of paying uh, our government, which I don't like paying our government, I like getting a K-1. Uh, we are partnered with Pecos Operating Partners, and my return on my investments are getting about 32% right now. That's not bad. I like having a uh, cash flow, a monthly check from production of oil and gas. Uh, oil and gas is here to stay for a while and uh, give us a call. Uh, the contact information is in the show notes. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and we will talk to you guys soon.